Well, after a big night, I'm going to go for a quick walk up to the um, one and station. There's old ruins there, so it's kind of a look. Said to everybody, if you can get up 6.30, we'll go for a walk, so. <laughs> I, I thought you were joking. I was. But then uh, I had normally got up. So. <laughs> it was like, oh, all right. Somebody's getting yeah, up. Good, go for, I might, we'll go for a walk. I might jog back, and then I'll be a bit warm, and then I'll jump in the river for a swim. Ah. And a wash. Yeah, that's it. I don't mind jumping in the river if I'm running, you know. But otherwise, it's a bit hard. Oh, you can do it. I did it the uh, second day. That's good. It wakes you up. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, well, I'll go have a look. There's a grave and an old homestead, so nice river walk. Special place this valley, so. I think it's Lovick's Hut. So, um, just had some burgers for lunch. And. What track did we do? I did a bit of filming. From oh, the truck. King Billy. And. Um, Zika. 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 Zika and King Billy. Pretty easy. Um, can take a cup of tea over and have a look at the hut. And. Keep going. Just sort of make our way slowly towards Craig's hut I suppose. You think we will make it there? No, I don't know. How far is it? Well it's not that far as the crow flies but there's Just depends. several different ways to get there. and Depends on the tracks. Yeah I'm not sure which are the good tracks from here to there but we'll just have to um, yeah have a look as we go. Get to each crossing, look at the map, look at the GPS and decide which way we go. But um yeah, we'll figure it out. It's probably, you can probably get there in an hour or two, I reckon. All right. But uh, we're going to camp this side of it, I reckon. Find a camp like this here and pull up a bit early again. Richie, is it scary? Uh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Have a lunch here. Few beans. That's where we make the fire. Yeah. It smells like that. Yeah. 
it's good if you you know have your rain or snow you just pull up here and yeah a big massive fireplace isn't it yeah. Bit of a history lesson by L LD DT. <laughs> LDT. <laughs> well, this is Jack Lovick's hut, and he lived here, well, worked here 42 years running cattle. And um, yeah, he's a horseman. They were all horsemen back those days. What Amazing are you? men, you know, to be able to live up here, and you know, the, um, you know, when you say horseman, but riding through the bush fast, you know, it's just like amazing skill that we've really lost you know and um i've seen chris stoney he's another mountain man from down the other side or not far from here and you know he can ride and um but yeah chasing scrub cattle through the bush is um incredible it takes incredible skill the horse and rider you know and that's what they all used to do bushmen End of an era, really, which is a shame, but um, anyway, they used to live and work up here. That's his hut, you see that in the background. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Craig's heart. It's my fourth time here, I suppose. But um, beautiful weather. Look at that. Amazing. Yeah, we had yeah. a few. We had all the weather today: rain, yeah. fog. Now we got sun, sunshine. The replica of a fake hut. <laughs> it's a replica of a fake. So it's yeah. a fake, fake hut. <laughs> yeah, fake hut burnt down. So all the replica of the fake hut. But what happened here? Why is it so popular? Oh, they made this for the movie. The actual Craig's hut was somewhere else. Ah, okay. So, I don't know that but movie. Because of the view here. You don't know the Mare Snow River? It's the most famous movie in the world, bro. Okay. You haven't seen it? No. It's... Oh, we'll have to watch it when we get home. I'm going to make you watch it. <laughs> it's like... It's a very famous movie. I think, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if I've seen it, but it's popular. Guy on a horse, riders on a big hill. Yeah, no, nah, I don't know. Maybe I've seen it. Not sure. Anyway, but I think so. This is where part of the movie was set, and um, well, yeah, they picked a great spot. Beautiful. So they built this hut for the movie, and then the hut burnt down, and then they made it again. Yeah. Ah, right. Yeah, amazing place and um, beautiful view at the moment. Yeah, it is. We're just lucky to get here around sundown, I suppose. Not far from that, and um, probably just camp down the road a little bit. Mm. Yeah, we got um, still two and a half hours of sun, sunlight, but they'll go down quick in the mountains too. Yeah. If you put your fingers up to the horizon and count every, every uh, fingers, fifteen minutes really, because you can't tell that close, but. Four fingers is an hour, you know, so often two hours, you know. You should put your sunnies on when you're doing that. <laughs> I didn't look at the sun. <laughs> anyway, huh? let's have a look. <laughs>
left the way you said, oh, um, just go up and go to the car park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once with um, Kaido on the dot one, once with Tim Parker, and then once with Trent, Trent and Kelly. Okay. So you have all seen the movie, did you? Everybody in the world seen it, maybe, right? How about Ernie? Ernie, did you see the movie? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm the only one. Yeah, just. Nah, I've probably seen it. Seen it right. I probably have seen it. Yeah. I probably have seen it. back from room when I filled my kitchens, uh, where I'm working as a builder, carpenter, and then um, I wanted to come back home, back this way, you know, over east, yeah. and a mate I had over there knew one of the um, guys over this way, and he offered me a job doing horse tours for here, from ex from Mansfield, yeah. and then um, they ended up, they couldn't get National Park's permit. So I hung around here for a couple of weeks and didn't, it fell through. So then I went home and I started building drifters. Mm. Right. That was the pot twist, or yeah. how do you say that? Pot twist. Pot twist. Well, if that job had to come through, which was, from what I understand at the time, the National Parks didn't give them the license to do horse tours to here. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that would be fabulous. Yeah. With Chris Doney. It would um, be a fair ride, wouldn't it, from down there? Well, it's from Chris, Chris Doney. He would have had a camp up here. That's the problem because he needed to have a horse camp close by somewhere right. and ride in. That'd be an amazing thing. Yeah. Anyway, he couldn't get the permits, so the job fell through. And um, if that had got the job, I would have. Would have been my dream job. I would have stayed, you know. Yeah. Mm. So you would be a tourist guide. Be, you'd probably see me here. <laughs> <laughs> see me. Like, come on, guys, this way. <laughs> anyway. just... That's how it all works. Hello. So that's the movie hub, is it? This one, yeah. Mm. in America, we used to sit around and um, the Americans in the mountains loved poetry, you know, Robert W. Service and um, they'd, yeah, in the mountains when I was mule packing, they'd sit around and around the fire at night and recite poetry and um, it just happened to be, like I'd been on a cattle station up north and when I was at the airport heading to America, I bought a little, a little poem, poetry book of Banjo Patterson, which is, he wrote in the Mamstone River. So I memorised it on the trail over in America because, you know, ride, we'd ride for hours every day, you know, like 10, 12 hours a day, in and out. And um, once you got your meals riding well, you know, just riding on a trail. So I used to get the little book out of my saddlebag and I would memorise the, po the poems from Banjo Patterson. And then I could you know, recite them um, around a campfire with the Americans and they used to love it because you know, Aussie accent reciting. And the Americans love Mansion River, like it's just, I met one of the guys there, um, Steve Darwood, his son, Jesse Darwood, I think. Um, he he memorized the whole movie, word for word. He was only like eight, 10 years old. So the Americans loved the story, because it's a horse story, you know, and um, yeah, and I used to recite it around the campfire, and I used to love that. And um, then I learned, some W Rob W service, some men that don't fit in and a few of those, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So the movie was around it was about the poem. Anyway. 
The sunset. Sunset. Yeah, not very often you get Craig's hut on a beautiful evening like this. And it's getting bloody cold. Mm. The temperature's dropping real quick. But, um, Where are we going to camp? Close here? Up, up, yeah, up the mountain? Just over the hill there. Well, it will be cold now. Just chatting to Kaido on the phone, a little bit of service, and um, yeah, oh, you know, the mountains are so beautiful, so it's always good to sit here and no one else around. So, um, yeah, let's have a bit of a look. We're going to drive straight through there, but uh, I was just talking to Kaido too, and um, yeah, the needle bearing on the front right has gone, so can't use four drive. But you know, look at that, can't be too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, big 76, 35 on the rear. Should get up, no worries. But, um, yeah. Alright, we'll go set up camp and get the fire going, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, freezing cold. Come on, baby. Cold up here. It is cold. <laughs> no, not too bad now. Good fire gun. If we get cold, I can just sit in the car with my heated seat on. <laughs> oh, that's it, heated, not. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Here we are, camped right next to Craig's hut. And yeah, I'm gonna head back. So just working out where we're gonna go. Craig's hut's here. Bit of a trap, looks like Craig's hut's there. Yeah. Which is where I was trying to head yesterday, but it's actually down here. It's just a, a point of interest. Anyway, so we're here. We wanna get on this track here. Stockland track, stockyard track. It comes down here, so we've got to get to Pineapple Flat. Right, we're here, so we could go around this way, King Basin Road. Probably try and do that, or we can go up the circuit and up that way. But I think we'll go King Basin Road mm. up here. So it's about a thousand k's home from here. Kaido's heading off in the morning on a trip with some boys, so I wanted to try and get home tonight so I could see in the morning. How's the case? Long way to go when you're heading off at nine, but Amber's still in the middle of the bush, but we'll see how we go. Anyway, it's been a good trip, quick one. As always, testing lots of gear. I've got on my phone, you know, 30, 40 little points that I want to design, fix up, change, whatever, you know. Lots of things. Every trip, a lot of notes. I always put notes on my phone things I want to fix up, you know, so um, it's always very valuable every trip we do, that's why we've been going 20 years, designed, you know, literally thousands of bits of gear and, um, you know, just making it better every time we go away, you know, so, yeah, every time well, and yeah, just gonna head on. What's that? What's that up?
across the little clearing. Sorry, wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> going in the front axle, so um, two drive. Look at that take, eh? That's awesome. It's like one, two, three, four, five, like so many valleys in between. It's better than the Alps, mate. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it? It's cool. We got the best in the Alps. Oh, it's a bit here, right? Bags. You know what? I've realised on this trip because um, sometimes people, when they're full driving, you got stuff everywhere, but you open the doors and shit falls out, you know? Like our mate said that on this trip. Every time you open the doors, everything falls out. But when you've got drifter bags, like that's your goal, you know? You open your door, nothing falls out. That's what happens when you get everything in a bag. You're like, why well, have everything in a bag? But well, that's the reason that you mm -hmm. open your doors, nothing falls out. Oh no, Richie's bags at the Oh, 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 look. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it comes. Nah, see, no worries. <laughs> yeah, it's because you got your massive big Jake yeah. bag. Jake's about to fly home in a few days, so he's got his all his big bag with him. But, um, yeah, and they're tough bags. They last forever. But, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of So, and then Richie's got his fridge set up, see the little drawer, big drawer there, little drawer here. See that? Geez, you've got stuff packed in there. Jaffle, jet boil, 
and um, what do you got in here? Oh, that's good, eh? Haven't used that yet. Nah. It's the virgin bag. Which, yeah. you know, we've got to always have a spare bag, you know, just for shipping. Going up to the showers or whatever, even chuck yeah. some dirty clothes in. Touch your bag. Table, use the table all the time. And then, Richie's got his, see that, that's what he wanted because him and Big Dog fly through the beers. I right, pop up the side window, straight in the fridge. And, um, pretty sad story in there, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? Good. There's like apples. empty box of apples, <laughs> some some lettuce. There's like an apple and some cherry tomatoes and lettuce. Yeah, um, last night we um, ran out of beers. We had four beers and three of us, so we had one beer each. And then we got the fourth beer and we divided it between three of us. <laughs> so we each had one and a third beers last night. Yeah. No, set up well, Richie. You've done a lot of trips, Richie, eh? Yeah. That's your swag. So Richie's been in the stretcher and the swag. How's the swag been? It's been great, yeah. Just swag straight on stretcher, eh? Straight on stretcher, and I've just got that, um, the thicker of the Stockton sleeping bags, and it was, yeah. Yeah. I reckon it must have been two degrees last night. Yeah. It was freezing, but. It wasn't quite freezing that much. That two. Didn't move. Yeah. They just flat swag, eh? Yeah. So comfy, eh? And easy to set up. Mm. Can you grab our mugs from the seat organizers there? Ah, that way you put them, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How's the seat organizer been? Very yeah, good. That's cool. a good idea, eh? Your cups mm. straight in the seat organizer. Yeah. You still got your tag on there. <laughs> Six pocket. Six pocket. <laughs> good little tag, that, eh? Yeah. Map in there. Yeah. All of you. Uh, show Richie's mod on the on the armrest. <laughs> What's that? The um. Oh, the beer fridge. <laughs> That's not a beer fridge. Nothing in there. <laughs> you don't mean hiding beers on us, have you? Yeah, that's what Danny said. We need one of them, eh? Cotto's got one organised, I think. What's it like? It's good, Jake. Yeah, you have to get used to it a bit uh, when you go sh when you shift a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah, need to get Can you both to... put your arm up there together or only one? <laughs> one at a time? Yeah, no, like yeah. the airline seat when you watch. Yeah, the old girl's done some trips, eh? Alright, Richie. Oh, look at this little setup, Jake. Mm. That looks good. I'll grab a couple of cups and we'll Ready to go. show you our coffee brew. We used to grind coffee, but yeah, we used to muck around grind coffee and everything in there. Oh, for camping, these are so good. So easy and pretty good, you know, easy to carry. Yeah, for camping they're just really, really good. Yeah, stir. And um, the big sumo, you get four cups easy. Mm. Yeah, bro. Go around 400 mil. Thanks, mate. Right, eh? Quick smoke -o and um. Keep going. Yeah, it's half an hour. Then we hit a little town, don't know what it's called, and then Myrtleford, Beechworth, like a pie at Beechworth Bakery, and then uh, 900 k's home. <laughs> Chips are better at Hungry Jacks. Chips are better. Well, I was with Richie up in the Cape. And we, we had this bag, but not this part here. And it was such a hard job getting all the shit out because that's a mess in there, you know. And after the Cape trip, I thought, we need a sleeve in there to be able to do just this. Look at that. Easy. Just go and have a look. Go <laughs> and have a look, mate. <laughs>
Richie, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> That's it. Easy. Well, well look, we, we filled two of them in how many days? And how many is four people? Five days? Well, a lot of alcohol, a lot of wine. And, but you know, just all the plastic and stuff, you know, it, it does get a mess in there, you know? Yeah. That's a sealed PVC sleeve. You can wash that out easy. Yeah, when you get home. Yeah. It's so easy, eh? it's really good. And uh, yeah, no, it's great. Anyway, that's all you gotta do. And it was, um, you know, we talk about these trips. I mean, sometimes I've had people say to us, oh, you know, my drawers aren't gonna get built because you're away on a chemistry trip, you know, like, seriously. But um, I mean, every single product that we make, everything we make and design is a result from trips. And that's a really good example, you know, it's a trip with me and Richie, Cape York, over Bamak, a tip. And you know, it's such a big job trying to pull everything out. It was a mess, you know, and it was. So, it's an example of how our products, um, you know, are produced from these trips that we do, you know. And not only just produced or, or the ideas from them, but changes, changes, changes. You know, this, this bag, we've changed so many times. And um, we're making them stronger and better and more improved. You know, we've gone from one strap to two and all these different things. Change them, change them, change them until they get them better and better and better. And uh, that's that's a unique thing that we have, I think. Because we make so much of it out ourselves, we can go away on a trip, come back, and make those changes on Monday. You know, which which we do all the time. <laughs> right. -o. Hey, Jimmy. How are, hey, how are you? Yeah, good. Can you hear this in the? Can you hear that noise in 76? Yeah. What do you think that is? Well, this does happen when you drive, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I put the foot on the clutch, it stops, see? Oh. How far away are we from Gloucester? Hey, bro. Hey, Jack. How are you going? <laughs> far out. What's happening? What? How are you, bro? That was a trip. Very good. Yeah. Is that your recovery point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to take the table out or what? There you go, man. Yeah, good. See ya. Yeah, likewise. Alright, right. well, 20 k's from home. Oh, yeah, yeah, mate. Oh, 20 k's. I was watching your, your video before. What is the gearbox or something, eh? Come on, eh? Yeah, good thing. Yeah, Where's Richie? Did you make it? Oh, you went shopping with Downey. Oh, cool. Pleasure. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Cool. Alright, well, I'll, we'll um, just gotta keep this tight, yeah? Just show the click. On channel, mate. On channel. Yeah, got you, mate. Oh, getting close. Keep going. Here we are. Right, good to go. Get on 60 and then I'll keep it tight. Jeez. Mm. Still got that noise. Gonna have enough gonna have enough power you reckon bro? The L75 may never work so hard. Yeah the old truck's falling apart. Look at the window. Find the window down there. Oh no, I can't put it back up after that. Window's <laughs> rooted. Some terrible knock. Uh what else has gone wrong? Uh, front needle bearing. Front needle bearing's gone. Two wheel drive. You, you were at the last day in two wheel drive. I think that's what's got it started. I know, but it wasn't good for it. Like it worked hard, eh? You know, like shit. Yeah. I always wear my seatbelt. Of course. Always. Always. Yeah. I don't know what the needle bearing's gone. So I had to do two wheel drive for the last couple of days, and now I've had a terrible knock. Oh. Yeah, but we've uh, been driving most of the way home. Well, it happened about, about Goulburn, I suppose. And then, uh, I thought we were going to be okay, but... Yeah, 
Go a bit fast, mate, probably 70 be right. Must be having to work, all good. When are you, um, are you going back to the reach or what? Back tomorrow. Oh, cool. What time are you leaving? Coming up, and uh, Richie's gonna stay, so yeah, we're just gonna be hanging around. Yeah, cool. 